Hello hackers, welcome to my new series of video of NoSQL injection. In today's lab, we are going to hack detecting NoSQL injection. So in this lab, there is a product category filter that's powered by MongoDB NoSQL database, that it's vulnerable to NoSQL injection. And to solve the lab, all what we have to do is to make NoSQL injection attack to display in realized products. And also in this video, we are going to see how to think outside of the box and see the target in different ways. So guys, without further ado, let's start. And here we go, guys. So first, let me activate Foxy Proxy as usual. And let's go to enter spec, click twice, and go to HTTP history. So as you can see, guys, this is a very basic web page. So my focus is going to be in this filter. And as you can see, whenever I click to the all filter, so it's going to give me nothing in the endpoint, just a slash. Just we have a method get and the endpoint of slash. And we have this HTML as a return. So let me try to click for the accessories and see if we have a different endpoint with the different parameters. And as you can see guys in here, we have a filter, question mark, category, equal, accessories. So let me send it to the repeater and this is going to be my target. And here we go. So now let me try to send the request. So the first thing that I want you to focus on it, that in this request, we have the content type of text HTML and it took 212 milliseconds to return. And here we go. So let me show you it as a render so we can see it in the real life. And here we go. Now we can see in here, we have the three items and our mission actually to see more than these three items whenever we call this accessories. So let me show you how to think outside the box. So I'm going to use VS Code so I can show you step by step what we are going to do. So in here, the first thing I'm going to do, I will try to generate an error so we can verify that this endpoint, it's vulnerable to NoSQL injection. So as I know that in the backend, they're using MongoDB. So let me assume they are using GS. So let's say they are using Node.js in the backend. So let me imagine how they're writing this code in the backend. So in the backend, I think they have a condition. So let's try this condition together. So let's say this category double equal and equal this parameter or this value. So I'm going to use just accessory in here. So I'm going to write it accessory as it is. And then we have the rest of the code. And here we have do something or just return these three items. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to generate a syntax error. So how can we broke this one? So if you are familiar with a SQL injection, so you definitely know that we can broke this syntax using a double code, or maybe a single code, or maybe using a specific character, or maybe open curly braces, or close it, or maybe we have a dollar sign, or maybe point comma. So let's try to use these characters and try to broke this parameter. So let me use the first one. So let me copy it from here and let me paste it in here and let's see. So as you can see, nothing has happened. Just we don't have an output in here, but I can see the accessory. And if I'm going to pretty in here, you can see it's 202, so nothing has happened. So this says here, it's a run, nothing is broken. Let me try a single code and see. And here we go, now we do have this syntax error and this is what I was looking for. So let's read together. So this is absolutely kind of leak of information because sometimes it's going to give me what kind of technology they're using, what's the version and based on these information, I can have a potential attack. So let me see, I can recognize that we do have this Mongo in here. So Mongo is a NoSQL database service that to provide a database based on the collections, not a tables like a SQL. 
So in here, I can verify that I found a vulnerable parameter. So this is what I was looking for. So guys, you can try these things if you want. So in case that I found what I was looking for, I don't need to move forward with them. So let me move to the next step. And now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to bypass the filter to extract the data using a Boolean condition. So let me show you how. So let me back to the result. As you can see, guys, we only have these three items. So maybe in the back end, we have extra conditions. So maybe we have extra conditions in this in this if block. So maybe we have end this limit equal to three. So maybe in the back end, there is extra property that limit the result. And now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to break this condition so I can remove this limit equal to three. And let me show you one of the payloads that we can do it in here. So in case that we know that we have a single code to broke the syntax, so I'm going to use it. Then I'm going to use double end one equal to one. And in case that this is a single code, not a double code, there is the single code at the end, I'm going to use it. So let me show you how. We do have this single code. I'm going to change numbers to the string. So I'm going to say and one character. So and character one equal to character one. Close the string so I don't need it to add it in here. And then I'm going to use a different one. So let me say or one equal to one. And then I'm going to use it as a string. So let me say one as a string equal to one. So this is absolutely the same as the second one. And then I'm going to use, so this is can broke this one, or we can use it or one or, and then I'm going to close it. So let me show it to you. So definitely is going to looking like this. So in case that we do have this one and we do have this thing, as you can see, we can just remove it from here. And now let me test it, these playlists that I prepared one by one and see which one of them is going to work. And let me try. And here we go. So in case that this is a URL endpoint, I'm going to encode it using control U. And here we go. So this is give me an error, doesn't work. Let me use the second one and let me encode it, use it control U. And let me see, okay, this is doesn't work. I can verify that this is work, but not what I wanted. Maybe I will change this end with, uh, with or. So this is not working 100%. Let me test the second one. Let me encode it. Yeah, this, this is definitely not gonna work. So I'm going to remove this one. So I needed to send it as a string, not as an integer like this. So this is not gonna work. I'm going to use the last one. And now I'm sure that this one is going to work because I'm using or not and. And let me see. And here we go, guys. Now I can see more than three. So this has absolutely worked. And also I recognized when I use this one, it works, but definitely not with end. So in here, let me say or. So let me try this one. And I think this is going to work too. So let me encode it. And here we go. This is also works. And as you can see, we have solve it in here. And also I can see more than three items. So these two payloads work very fine. So let me explain it to you. As we can see that to broke end, so definitely we have this end in the condition in the back end. So to broke it, we don't have to use end like these, but we have to use or, and then we have to give it something correct. So this is gonna be this none, and then it's going to break the rest of the condition. So that's why these two payloads works fine.
And here we go guys, as you can see, now we successfully solved that up. I hope that you learned how to find a SQL injection parameter's vulnerability. I hope that you liked the video, if you have any comment, please put it in the comment below, like the video, and stay tuned for the next videos.